you're just joining us, voters in several local communities will head to the polls tomorrow. There is a special primary election for the 80th District Assembly seat previously held by Lorena Gonzalez. There are three candidates vying for that seat, two Democrats, David Alvarez and Georgette Gomez, and Republican Lincoln Pickard. Joining us live now to talk about District 80 is former Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez. Lorena, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, you served in the State Assembly for nearly a decade. You were very uh, passionate about the District 80, which covers National City and Chula Vista, among other places, and parts of San Diego, of course. Uh, tell us how it changed over the course of that time and what you think its distinct needs are moving forward. Well, you know, it really hasn't changed. It, 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 the, the district starts in Chula Vista, goes down to the border. It's a working class district. It's, you know, I guess the big change has been during COVID when uh, you have essential workers who went to work every day, contracted COVID during um, this time, unfortunately, at disproportionate rates, don't have adequate health care, need good jobs, good wages, and that's what matters for the district. And so um, it, it's been that way for a while. I, I think we've worked every day to try to make it better for working folks in, uh, in the South Bay, but we need to continue down. Uh, Lorena, you're uh, involved in some way in this election as far as uh, endorsements go and obviously a lot of interest in what's going on in the district. Why didn't you leave the job? Why didn't you not finish uh, your term? Uh, you know, I got I had the opportunity um, that was proposed to me to lead the California Labor Federation. That's the union of all unions in California, the AFL-CIO. And in giving that um, opportunity to me, which will start in July, it put me in a, a, a position that would appear to be a conflict. I wasn't sure if once given that opportunity um, that I could represent without people assuming there was some kind of conflict. Um, and so I went ahead and resigned to ensure um, that that nobody felt like that that was a legal or just a, a moral conflict. And so now I'm just waiting to take over the California Labor Federation. And during this election so far, or campaign season, I should say, you've endorsed Georgette Gomez, a Democrat, over uh, David Alvarez, also a Democrat. Why? Well, I, I mean, it's her consistency when it comes to issues of working people. We've seen, uh, quite frankly, why I think in the last few weeks, we've seen so much mail hit our mailboxes from big oil, from big tech, from corporations, all pushing landlords, pushing um, against Georgette and for David. That says a lot, you know, who 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 your supporters are. Um, she's being supported by firefighters and nurses and teachers and everyday folks, um, environmentalists and community members. And unfortunately, he, um, despite what we used to believe in and, and how he used to present himself in the community, has clearly gone to Sacramento and sold himself to a big corporate lobbyist in a totally different way. What do you think is the biggest challenge for somebody stepping into this job as far as, you know, being a part of this system here in California? It's a big state, a lot of money, a lot of uh, area to cover. What, what's the biggest challenge for somebody who gets into this job? I think the biggest challenge is staying true to your roots and your values and your community. And so you go to Sacramento and we don't see people who we see at the bus stop or who we see serving our food or, or coming you know, to pick up their mail next door. We see a bunch of corporate lobbyists. We see a bunch of people with money and influence and power. And you have to have a backbone of steel to say, no, I am never gonna sell out my constituents. I will always stand with them. We will do what's right. And that's gonna be the biggest challenge for anyone who's elected, but quite frankly, that's that's why I've stuck with Georgia Gomez, because I think she will do that. Well, stepping outside of the campaign for a second, we haven't had an opportunity to talk with you in some time. Um, how are you and your family doing after your home was set fire back in January? And can you tell us where the investigation stands? Well, I'm um, we're, I'm actually still in a hotel. Luckily, I've been traveling a lot so um, with my new job, so uh, it hasn't been much change. But, um, you know, I the it is an arson investigation. It's open. It's not something I really discuss. It's been a, a truly traumatic time, um, especially for my my kids, um, my my 18 year old in particular, who was woken up and was the person who really discovered the fire. It, it's been really tough. He's away at school at UC Santa Barbara. Can you imagine going through that much trauma and then having to immediately the next day go back um, to school? Uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot. And um, luckily, you know, we have a very strong family unit. My husband's uh, completely supportive and, and has been, and, and we've been able to get so much support from the community, from our family and friends, but it's tough. And it's disappointing that we've gotten to a situation where um, anyone would believe that arson is a good idea.